Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another little behind the scenes video. I'm not gonna waste too much time with it. I've got a lot of videos in various stages of incomplete, but I've also got a lot in the hallway to unbox. That way I can batch film and uh, batch write, do all the B-roll and everything. Hit the like button, that actually really helps out. And let's see what we've got coming up on the channel. All right, first box. This hallway is really starting to look like the kitchen in my last place. We gotta do something about this. Oh, the EVH is very tempting. But I know what's in here. I haven't been this excited for a guitar in a long, long time. Let's open it up. <laughs> Dude, I have the biggest f***ing grin on my face right now. Alright, so this is a Gretsch. It's the first one that I've had on the channel. The first one I'm ever gonna try, actually. And of course, it's a single cut. Awesome. We love that here. It's in this blue sparkle that my camera's actually picking up pretty well. Bigsby and everything. I love how much that f***ing, like, mass and metal <laughs> that Bigsby's have. They remind me of, like, I don't know, like, the old muscle cars of Tremolos. Already, there's a ton to like about this, but... The reason that I wanted to try this one specifically, look at how long this neck is. This is a 30 inch baritone. Gretsch with a 30 inch scale length and a Bigsby. <laughs> awesome. One of the guys in Loathe plays one of these, or maybe one without the Bigsby. And when I saw that, like a 30 inch Gretsch being used for metal, I was like, Fuck yes, dude, <laughs> I have to try it. What tuning does this even ship in? Drop G, maybe? With this ridiculous scale length, you can definitely go lower than that, though. Look at how far apart these frets are. This is insane. Like, it makes the headstock look so small. For comparison, here's a 25-inch scale length guitar. That is... I love it. I, I just love it. Alright, let's do a quick visual inspection. That's a very nice piece of... I don't think it's actual rosewood, but it's a nice dark color. No cosmetic defects with the top. The frets feel fine. If I get super close, there's like some slight tool marking, but that's it. <laughs> I love how old school this is. Like the mechanism for the Bigsby is this giant screw. Is Bigsby like Floyd Rose, by the way, where uh, the licensed version gets a bad rep? Or the licensed Bigsby's pretty okay? I mean, it feels pretty okay to me. It feels like a solid unit and it's returning the instrument to pitch. And you've got some direct mounted mini humbuckers. <laughs> Even these are really cool with the flat tops and engraved logos. And the flat top theme is everywhere. It's with the control knobs, the pickup selector, even these strap buttons, which you uh, unscrew and they're, they're strap locks, I think. Here it is from the back. And uh, I've just realized that I should probably use this guitar stand instead of just dumping it unceremoniously on the floor. This sparkle color is glorious and it's everywhere. It's on the top. It's on the back of the neck, back of the body. It's a bolt-on neck, and I mean, I didn't even check the spec sheet. I thought that it was a set neck. It's not, but it seems very well put together, and the neck pocket seems tight and everything. So it's not super expensive. It's pretty affordable, actually, for <laughs> this much fun. It's kind of funny, though. These small tuners with these small buttons and the small headstock just look absolutely ridiculous on this incredibly long guitar. These tuners do feel pretty solid though. All right, the stand was getting pretty annoying to film with, so I put it back on the floor. But yeah, what I was saying about the tuners, the tuners feel very solid and they kind of really need to be. On a guitar with the scale length this long, if they're jumpy or anything, that would be a disaster. Is this even a guitar anymore or is this a short scale bass? <laughs> It straddles the line for sure. I just love this. I love this so much. Like just as a concept, I haven't even plugged it in yet. Awesome, man. I'm really looking forward to demoing this one. So this is a 30 inch baritone Gretsch with a Bigsby. Make sure you subscribe. You got notifications turned on and everything if you want to hear how it chugs. <laughs> Pro YouTuber plug aside. Let's see what else we got. Next box and let's go for this little one down here. Hmm, wait a second, this doesn't seem to be a guitar. It seems to be the really tasty and really healthy sponsor of today's video. Let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. So I don't know about you guys, but I love cereal. Cereal is awesome. It's just a great way to start any day. It's great for a midnight snack. Problem is a lot of these cereals we love to eat aren't really that good for you. A lot of sugar, a lot of corn syrup, a lot of stuff that you really shouldn't eat too much of. They're really kind of junk foods in disguise. Enter Magic Spoon, who build themselves as being a healthy cereal that tastes too good to be true. And yeah, pretty much. With Magic Spoon, there's no cane sugar, no corn syrup, no sugar alcohols, no artificial flavors or sweeteners. It's gluten-free, grain-free, only four net grams of carbs and a full 13 to 14 grams of complete protein 
per serving. Nice. I'll be totally honest with you, all that is great to know, but it's not really what I look for when I buy food though. Being healthy is a big important bonus, but I want my food to taste good. And Magic Spoon tastes good. To try it out, they sent me the variety pack with four of their most popular flavors. Fruity, Frosted, Cocoa, and Peanut Butter. They're all super tasty. I'll have to take Shiv's word on the peanut butter since I'm allergic, but I really like all the others, especially Frosted. Also, it has nothing to do with the food aspect, but the art style is amazing, and I always appreciate a solid visual style. It's just fun, and it shows they put a lot of care into the whole experience. So if you're ready to try a healthy cereal that tastes too good to be true, head over to magicspoon.com slash agafish. And for you guys, if you use the code agafish, you can snag a bonus $5 off any order. There's also a 100% money back happiness guarantee. So trying it out is kind of a no brainer. Start your day off with something tasty and healthy. The link will also be in the description. Of course, clicking it helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're doing that, speaking of tasty, let's see what other tasty guitars we have coming up on the channel. Next box. I brought the boxes in because there's like a dance party going on upstairs or something and uh, I think the music would give me a copyright claim. Content ID abuse is that bad these days. Anyways, so next box. I think we'll go with this small one down here because if it is what I think it is, it'll go real, real nicely with the baritone. And then we can round it off with two guitars or at least one guitar and uh, this little mystery. All right, let's do it. Let's open it up. Let's go. All right, so this is a Digitech Whammy DT. And remember that whole saga, like, I don't know, what was it, three weeks, a month ago, where Fluff made that video and everyone's like, oh, what's happening to Digitech? Are they bankrupt? Have they been just like discontinued? Well, in the end, it turned out that Harmon sold Digitech to court and that's why they weren't on the website. But anyways, at the time, nobody knew anything. It looks like Digitech was just a dead brand. And I've always wanted one of these Whammy DTs and I was like, ah, are the prices gonna skyrocket? So. I, I panic bought. <laughs> In my defense, I was not alone. George, my Sweetwater guy, said that they got hundreds of orders for these things the day Fluff's video dropped. Thanks for sending us all into a panic, Fluff. But you know what? I'm not even mad. I found a good price for one of these used on Reverb. Barely ever happens these days. These have been so difficult to get at a good price. Pretty nice this comes with an origami drone because birds aren't real. But yeah, the reason that uh, I want one of these and the reason these have been so difficult to get is they're a stupid amount of fun. It does the same thing as the Digitech drop. It can also go up and you can also use the pedal to bounce around octaves and harmonies. So you hear these a lot in modern metal Core, modern death core. We've got like the super low chugs followed by the high pitched squealy things, the screeching high dissonant notes. I'm, I'm making it seem really bad, but it sounds really cool in context. Maybe cool is the wrong word. It sounds heavy as f is what I'm saying. So, uh, you guys thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is gonna be absurd. So yeah, I'm really not supposed to be spending any money because uh, I just bought a house and <laughs> that shit was expensive. But you know what, it's been pretty rare to find a good used deal on one of these. And sometimes you just gotta do it for better content for you guys. Frida's diapers can wait, we've got the whammy DT. But uh, yeah, you can expect a lot more nonsense <laughs> in the demo tracks coming up. Oh man, I'm so excited to use these together. All right. Let's see what else we got. All right, next box. I'm kind of tempted for this one because uh, it's an eBay buy and I hope it came in good condition, but I've never played an EVH before and I don't know what's in this one. Yeah, you know what? Let's see what we got from EVH. Let's open it up. Wow, that is a green guitar. <laughs> it's a bold thing, but I have to say it. I don't think subtlety is this guitar's strong suit. Good God. Big Nickelodeon energy. Anyway, so this is an EVH 5150 series guitar, and it's in this new slime green color. Definitely a color you'd more expect to see on Andrew Bainis' channel, though. Reminds me a lot of the Kramer Beretta. Makes sense, that Van Halen connection. Banana slash hockey stick headstocks and everything. I forgot which one is which, I'm not even gonna lie. But the EVH is noticeably better featured. For one thing, sticking with the theme of being not subtle at all, we have this big red button 
That is the kill switch. That actually feels really satisfying. Huge amp type knobs for easy control. This one feels like a non-friction pot. Very easy to adjust the volume. Non-recessed Floyd Rose, so you can only do the dive bombs, but it allows you to have the D-tuna. So we're in standard tuning now, and then we're in drop D, just like that. And we're back. Spoke wheel truss rod adjustment. Always appreciate when the pickup selector is in the Les Paul position. And there's even a Les Paul style output jack. Very cool. And EVH being a part of Fender's family of specialty brands, the neck has graphite reinforcement with a compound radius fingerboard. Jumbo frets, rounded fingerboard edges, back of the headstock, EVH branded tuners, nut bolts, I guess. It doesn't have the Allen key garage that you find on Kramer's. But I mean, the rest of the specs more than make up for that. And, and one of my favorite things on bolt-on guitars, a nice engraved neck plate. These just look so good, man. Oh, I do like this. So usually on a matching headstock, it's just the top. You don't have this kind of uh, side action going on. It's very simple. They probably just taped this bottom bit. Really small touch, but it looks very, very cool. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of an ugly guitar, but it's an EVH, so it's more than allowed. I'm really looking forward to trying this out, actually. I've never played an EVH branded guitar before. I've never even played an EVH product, like an amp or anything, but I have had experience with EVH style Kramers, and I'm really curious to see how this compares to those. Honestly, quality-wise, just from an initial impression, this feels better, but it also doesn't have uh, Hot Wheels graphics, <laughs> so we'll see. One last little flyover. Wow. <laughs> it's hot. It's very, very hot. Last box. Only one remains. Here we go. Let's see if UPS honored the sticker. Let's open it up. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, this uh, actually wasn't what I thought was in the box. I completely forgot about this one, but this is even better. All right, let's talk about it. What exactly is this? All right, so this is a slick guitar. They're a Guitar Fetish own brand. You're probably familiar with Guitar Fetish, if not actually use them yourself. Um, they do like parts and components and that kind of thing. And this brand, Slick, has been on my list to check out forever. Because these have some inherently cool specs. You got some aged metals, like the volume knob, the pickup selector, uh, the pickup covers. Look, pickup ring screws, the pole pieces. The bridge is all brass, including these massive saddles. Low key, these kind of look like brass monopoly houses in this crazy sandblasted ash ash blasted body with purple grain filler I'm a massive fan of what's going on here all this dude this is a sub 300 dollars guitar what the fuck what other budget guitar has this feature set it's not normal the case is extra it's not included but let's talk about that for a second because when it popped out of the box i was genuinely taken aback i was like what is this white tolex with orange plush are you fucking kidding me call this the cantaloupe case here it is from the back i mean it just looks so awesome this is kind of worth it for just the body alone here are the tuners this neck has a lot of freckles or uh what do you call them bird's eye figuring they're watching the brass tuning keys are cool kind of weird that they included that but not a brass nut though nice little neck plate and you can see little things that aren't as clean as you would get on a more expensive guitar like that's not super clean routes aren't super clean they don't match up with the plastic there are some uh, slightly sharp edges you can easily file those down though the nut could probably be replaced. Again, that routing is, is kind of sus. But let me reiterate, this is a $289 guitar. You know, I might even replace the neck because this body alone is fucking worth it. Look at it. It's not light though. I'm not even gonna lie. But yeah, hugely appreciate them sending this out for us to check out together, especially with the cantaloupe case. You guys know I love checking out these super affordable guitars. See which ones are worth modding the absolute crap out of and then actually modding the absolute crap out of them. And this looks like a really, really fun one. Oh my god. All right, one last little flyover. 
that'll do it. So that's it for this video. Gonna get back to writing the tracks and filming the B-roll and all that stuff. But I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of what's coming up on the channel. Shout out to all my amazing patrons who make this and every other video possible by allowing me to bring on video editors. You may notice the content is more consistent now and we're working to make the move to extra crispy 4K, make the videos even better visually for you guys. So if you wanna join them in directly supporting the channel and get bonus extras, link is down below. Social media, Discord, and affiliate links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.